All right. Sorry, folks. Apparently my microphone got turned off and I was not aware. And so last set of notes that I posted didn't have my voice. So I'm going to repost these. Here we go. Okay. Exponential uh, modeling. Okay. So what we're looking at is where we have models where we have exponents in them, like x squared, x to the third, x to the two fifths, all that good stuff. Okay, our normal model looks like this, y equals a, b to the x. Okay, where a is our initial amount, b is our growth or decay rate. Okay, and x is usually our time. Okay, uh, this occurs all the time in regular stuff, finance, everything. Okay, we'll take a look at it. A couple things we want to revisit, uh, some rules of exponent. Anything to the zero power equals one. Anything to the negative, you just take the reciprocal of it, put it down in the denominator if it happens to be in the numerator, and then go. Okay, we'll take a look at what this looks like. Y equals 2 to the X. I'm going to plug in some numbers and I'm going to graph it. All right, I'm going to plug in, let's go with uh, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Well, anything to the negative power becomes a, anything to the negative power becomes a fraction, right? So we have this would be 2 to the negative 3, right? And so that would equal 1 over 2 to the third, which equals 1 eighth. Okay. This would be 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 2 squared, which equals 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1, which equals 1 over 2. 2 to the 0 equals 1. 2 to the first power equals 2. 2 to the second power equals 4. And 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Okay, And so we'll see this pattern. What's happening, as you can see here, is we're doubling it as we go. Double a 2 is 4. Double a 4 is 8. If you double one eighth, it's one fourth. Okay, so let's take a look at how that looks on the graph. Let's see if that clicks up. Good, nice. All right, so we had uh, negative one, two, three was one eighth okay, down there. Negative 2 was like 1 fourth, like right there. Then we're at 1 half. Then 0 was 1. 1 gave us 2. 2 gave us 1, 2, 3, 4. And 3 gave us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up there. So it's going to look like this. Okay, that's called exponential growth. You see it in stuff like how diseases spread or how rumors spread. They grow exponentially. Hit it and go. All right, here we go. Okay, when working with exponential functions, we're going to usually use the form y equals a b to the x, okay, to solve some of these word problems, where the x is your time. So sometimes you just put t in there. a is the initial amount. B is the growth factor if it's above 1, or a decay factor if it's less than 1. Okay, So here, if you invest $1,000 and earn 6% after one year, you will have $1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06, the percentage rate, 1 plus because we're growing, and then to the first power because we're only doing one year, and then we get... $1,060. Okay, and let's take a look at another example right here. Okay, the population in the United States, usually population growth is exponential. Okay, the population of the United States is in, 19, in 1994 was 26 million with an average annual increase of about 0.7%. So 0.7% in decimals equals 0 0.007. Right? 
That's the decimal representation of 0.7%. So what's the growth factor? Well, it's a growth factor. It goes up. Okay? So it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.007. So 1.007 is our growth rate. Okay? Suppose the growth rate had continued to be 0.7%. Write a function to model this population growth. Well, we'd have y equals our initial amount of 260 million. Okay, I'm not going to write out all those zeros. We're going to know we're dealing in hundreds of millions. Our growth rate is 1.007. And then we have t here, function of time. Might put an x there. Either way, is it's a variable, it's fine. Okay, suppose the growth rate had continued to be uh, 0.07%, what would the population of the U.S. be in the year 2000 using this model? All right, let's take a look at it. Y equals 260 million times 1.007, and the time would be the time from the year 1994 to 2000, so that would be six years. Okay, And then I punch this in my calculator. I've got 1.07. 007 to the sixth power, and then that times 260, and I get it equals 271.1 million, right? All right, so that's an example of an exponential growth. Okay, let's look at these. Let's talk if they're growth or decay. And here's what I always say. How far away from one is the B term? The B term is right here, right there, right there. How far away from one is it? If it's below, then that's a decay. And how far away is it from there? So right here, 0 0.12. How far away is that away from one? Well, it's 0.88. So this is a decay at 0.88 or an 88% decay. Okay. This one is above one, so we're talking growth, and that's at 0.12 or a 12% growth. This one is really like 0.5, which is below, and it's by 0.5 or a 50% decay. Okay, I talked about this before, uh, and we're moving on to down here, the asymptotes, okay? It's a line in the graph as X approaches or Y approaches infinity, really. Okay, the horizontal asymptote for any exponential function is Y equals zero. Because no matter what number we plug in for X, the Y will always be greater than zero. Okay, so the one we did before was uh, Y equals two to the X, right? Well, if we plugged in Y equals two to say the negative four, what would we get? We would get one over two to the fourth, which equals one sixteenth, right? If you plugged in something like 50, right? Well, two to the negative 50, okay, is 0 0.00000000008 something. Right? I mean, it's super small. Okay? But it's always above zero. So most of our graphs are going to look like this. Zero and then head up. Okay? That's how exponential growth uh, looks on a graph. All right. Very good. Moving up here, we'll take a look at buying a used car and seeing how much it's worth later. Okay? So suppose you want to buy a used car for... $11,800, pretty nice used car, okay? The expected depreciation of car is 20% per year. So you're gonna drive it until you're, you know, like 22 or something like that. Estimate the depreciation after six years. So you get this car at 16, you're gonna drive it until you're 22 and you're out of college, and then you can get a real job and get a nicer car, right? That's the goal. How much are you gonna sell this car for after six years? Well, let's take a look at it. Y equals the initial amount, $11,800, okay? 
we're depreciating at 20%. So it's going to be a 0.8, right? How far away from one? Down 20%, 0.2, down, and we get our B is 0.8. Okay, now we're talking how many years? Six years. Okay, so now we punch that into our calculator. 0.8 to the sixth power. Okay, and then times 11800. And we get $3,093.30. About $3,093.30. Cash money. That's not terrible. That'd get you a decent down payment on a car. Okay. All right. Very good. Sorry about the technical difficulties. See ya.